Howdy, howdy, everybody. I am Nicole. That's Nicole Mitchell Griffin. Nicole Smell with two E's. Let me turn this off. I am at the shop today. And I just decided, well, let me come and say hi and see what's going on for Labor Day. This morning when I woke up, uh, it was gloomy. And I was wondering if anybody else was feeling that too. Because it's the change of the season, right? So look. There's this thing that's called SAD. It's called Seasonal Affective Disorder. And I want you to say no to SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder. And help somebody else with this because <clears throat> your healthcare provider is not going to tell you this. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. Um, just in case you wanna know where I'm at, I am at Body by Bally, 7666 Reading Road. Yes, we have extra large. I wish I could turn the camera around and show you. I don't know if I can do that. Can I do that? Can I turn the camera around and show you? Oh yeah, kid, yeah, there you go. Oh, I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it. I'm learning how to be camera savvy, sorry. So anyway, um, we do have extra large. I am holding it down for my daughter. This is her um, women's boutique, so I'm holding it down for her. So, sad. Say no to sad seasonal affective disorder. In a nutshell, let me tell you what seasonal affective disorder is. It is, for instance, when the season changes, you change. Or when the sun goes down, you start to go down. Does that make sense? Um, the, if there's no sun out, like today, I'm on the East Coast, so or Midwest, wherever, Ohio. So the sun was not up this morning. So it would, it will cause you to feel gloomy. And you go to the doctor and you tell them, and of course, they, they're going to put you on some pills. As soon as you go to the doctor and you say, I feel down, I feel sad, I don't have any energy, um, I don't. I don't want to do anything. They're going to put you on some pills. They're going to put you on something. And I just want to encourage you, number one, if you feel the need to follow your healthcare provider's advice and to take the medication, please do so. I'm not here to tell you not to take your medication. That's not what I'm here to tell you. What I am here to do is to inform you of some things that your healthcare provider may or may not share with you. Most of them don't share it because most doctors are taught to write a script. As soon as something is wrong, write a prescription. You come in and say something, write a pill. I mean, yeah, write a prescription for a pill. So I want to tell you why you have or may have seasonal affective disorder. So again, if the season changes and you start to change, you start to feel sad, um, you start to go down, you want to go to bed early, you feel gloomy, you don't want to get out of the bed, um, or you may feel a little depressed. You may feel sad about what's going on in your life. Maybe you didn't lose the weight that you planned on losing for 2019. Maybe you started a business and it hasn't gone the way that you thought it would go for 2019. Maybe you got laid off. Um, maybe you started a new job and you realize, mm, I don't like this job either. <laughs> um, maybe you got some other healthcare issues. If you have other things that are going on, it's like that just becomes another layer and another layer and another layer. And then it just magnifies the seasonal affective disorder. Okay. So the abbreviation is called SAD. Isn't that ironic? Look, I'm going to tell you three ways to help you to fight back against seasonal affective disorder. The number one way for you to fight back against seasonal affective disorder is to recognize the fact that, hey, everybody over here is so nice, is to recognize the fact that you do go through some changes every time the season change. If you don't recognize that, then 
everything else I tell you is not going to help you. So I want you to think about when the season changes, when the season change, does that bother you? When the kids go back to school, does that start to bother you? When you know that Christmas time is coming around or Thanksgiving is coming around, does that bother you in any kind of way? You may not be able to put your finger on it to identify how it bothers you, but you may feel, as we say, some kind of way. So that's the number one uh, thing you got to do is recognize the fact that every time the season changes, I start tripping. That is like the first clue. The other one, the next one, what number am I on? Two. The next one is <clears throat> you don't tell anybody. You have got to share with somebody so that they can hold you accountable. Because if people don't know you that well, you can pull the I don't feel good card and pull the cover over your head and stay in the bed and say, oh, I'm just, it's, it's just a movie day. I'm just going to watch a movie or I'm going to curl up or I'm going to read. Or I'll tell you, here's a good one. Here's a good one. You may be a person who binges on TV shows. Like if you got um, Netflix or the Fire Stick or something, you may be a person who starts to binge on television shows or movies or whatever. And let me tell you why. Because it will allow you to not concentrate on how you feel. So you'll be focused on what's going on on the TV show. And you will then not be aware of how you feel. Somebody tell me you tell, I'm telling the truth. Somebody write down there, girl, you telling the truth. Because it is. And then the third thing is what we eat. The third thing is what we eat. Here's the thing about nutrition. If you have some nutritional disorder, whatever it is, because there are several of them, and so I don't want to bore you with that. But if you have a nutritional disorder, sometimes you may not be able to convert the necessary hormones into what's called serotonin and melatonin. Serotonin makes you feel good. Melatonin makes you lay down and go to sleep. And so if you find yourself, you can't sleep at night and you find yourself throughout the day feeling what we call blah, then that could be an issue as well. So it's important then for us to eat, and I like to call them happy foods. I don't know, somebody's going to be like, what the heck? Happy foods. What foods make you happy? And I'm not talking about like bread and cakes and pies. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about happy food. Hey, um, foods that make you happy. Think about something from when you were a childhood that brought happy memories. Like if you were a kid who ate popsicles. Or if you were a person who ate now laters, when I was in elementary school, the way you knew you had a boyfriend was he brought you now laters, now laters and number two pencils. You have to be old enough to know about the now later game. But anyway, happy foods, foods that give you a happy memory. Music. That's why I was playing that song right there, because it just took me way back. <laughs> it took me way back. So when me and my girlfriends used to be on the dance floor and we would just be shutting the floor down. We would party from the time, from the time it opened to the time it shut down at two o'clock. And at two o'clock, we would still be telling the DJ to play more music. And then we would go hang out from two to six. We was just partying was my vice. That was, that was our thing. And little did we know that we were dancing and exercising and releasing all kind of endorphins because we was laughing and having a good time and we had no clue that that's what was going on. So those are some of the things that you can do. You can make sure that you are not in the bed binging on movies and TV shows. You definitely need to tell somebody what is going on with you so that they can hold you accountable and get you out from under the cover. You got to watch the foods that you are eating because if you're eating heavy foods you know like it's the holiday so people are going to be eating macaroni and cheese and bread and cakes and pies and ribs and all of that and it's it's heavy food and okay if that's something that makes you happy then i guess you can go ahead and do it but 
don't miss the point. I'm talking about something that's going to generate a happy memory. Like when you were a kid, if you was one of those kids who used to go down to the corner store and get um, a pickle and you was excited because you could bite the booty of the pickle and you had um, some Grippos. If you don't live in the East Coast, you don't know what Grippos are, but potato chips and whatever kind of soda pop or whatever. The point is it brought you a happy memory. Hey, rocks. So I am saying to avoid the foods that are heavy, but you want to seek out something that's going to bring you a happy memory. Music, if music makes you um, have a happy memory. Now, whatever kind of music you want to play, you know, I'm into worship music as well. However, when I was out hanging with my girlfriends, <clears throat> we wasn't listening to um, the Hawkins or none of that. <laughs> We just, we weren't doing that. We was out doing the butt and, you know, listening to, um, hey, and, um, you know, we was partying. That's what we was doing. You know, Friday night, just got paid, guy, whatever music, if, you know, earth, wind, and fire, whatever is your vibe. All I'm saying is this, seasonal affective disorder is real, okay? And so no matter what anyone else tells you, your feelings are yours and they are yours alone and they are real. And when people don't know, I am such an advocate for accountability because when people don't know what's going on with you, if they don't know you, you can brush them off. You can give them the okie doke and they won't even know because they don't know you, right? And so if you got some people around you who know you, then you can't just get that off, okay? So those are the ways to help with seasonal affective disorder. And I just want you to say no to seasonal affective disorder. It is something that I have dealt with for years and it has only been in the last, I'm gonna say maybe 10 years that I have been able to recognize that's exactly what this is. So the number one thing you have to do is recognize that is exactly what this is so that you can then begin to get up and deal with it. Because if not, you'll lay around and eat bun buns and gain a whole bunch of weight. And then you'll be even worse off. And then you'll have a side of diabetes going on and a big old gut and all that other kind of stuff. And that's not what you want. So look, <clears throat> y'all know that I am inviting you to join me for 30 days of healthy heart and mind challenge. That's right, 30 days healthy heart and mind challenge. I put the link in the description box so you can go and register. And this is for people who feel like you are in a slump. It's that time of the year. And I'm telling you, you do not have to wait until January 1 to reset. That's what we're going to do. It's an accountability group and we are going to reset our healthy heart and mind. Some of us started off with goals for 2019 and we feel kind of bad because we didn't reach them. You don't have to feel bad. You just get back up there. You just get back on track. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to hold each other accountable. Oh, excuse me. Hold each other accountable to get back on track to being healthy, healthy in your heart, whatever your healthy um, goals were, and healthy in your mind, changing your mindset. Part of the reasons why we get thrown off so quickly from doing something is because our mindset is off. It's like as soon as it, I, let me tell you this. There's something that I started off doing and it didn't go the way that I thought. But because it didn't go the way that I thought, I felt like, wait a minute, let me look at this a different way. It's the first time that I ever did something and it didn't go right. So now I got that one out the way. I could have looked at it like, oh my God, it didn't work and felt sad about it. No, we got to figure out different ways of looking at things. It's all about perspective. So if you are in a slump of any kind, you need to be with me for 30 days, healthy heart and mind challenge. If you have any underlying diseases like diabetes, you got your obese. Some people say, I don't know if I'm obese or not. Do you got more gut than you want to have? You have hypertension. <laughs> Did you start off saying, I'm gonna exercise and I'm gonna lose weight, and then you didn't? Maybe you decided that you were going to do that business and then you got off track. So look, I want you to come and hang out with me for 30 days of reset. We're gonna reset for 2019. We're not gonna wait until January 1. So that's what we're gonna do for 2019.
So if you're a person who said, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to start eating healthy. Here's the thing about working with me during these 30 days. You do not even have to think about how to get started because I'm going to help you do that. One of the things that helped me when I was going through my healing process, and I'm still going through it, is the fact that um, I had coaches and um, my therapist that were helping me. And so when I would come, I would feel kind of help, helpless and hopeless. But because they were the ones with the plan and I just did what they told me to do, when I would leave, I cannot say that immediately I felt better, but as I kept going and they kept telling me what to do and I did not have to think about what to do, eventually I started feeling my strength coming back. I started feeling my energy coming back. My balance has gotten so much better. I know you have seen me killing the Stairmaster. And here's the thing. I started going to work out not for the purposes of weight loss, I actually needed help with balance and I was bumping in the doors, had bruises on my arms and it was horrible. I couldn't drive. Um, I couldn't chew on one side. You would have thought that would help me lose the weight, wouldn't it? <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but here's the thing. What helped me was the fact that I did not have to think about it. And so for the next 30 days, I want to give you the opportunity to not focus on the fact that you didn't do what it is that you set out to do. All you're going to do is be, be willing, like just come and be willing. I'll do all the thinking and you'll do all the talking. I'll do all the listening and then we'll collaborate together and we will have a good time. Now, if you stuck up and you um, snotty and you like you really are not a fun person, don't come because I like to have fun. So don't don't come. There's something else out there for you. <laughs> There's something else out there for you. I just like to be honest and upfront. <laughs> So go ahead and register. I would love to see you. It is $67. We are going to be together for 30 days. Listen, I am a retired nursing professor. And one of the things that I bring to the table is the fact that I know that I know what I'm talking about. I have helped so many people in healthcare trying and not trying. And so I'm excited about the fact that I'm putting programs together to help people and share with them things that their physician is not going to tell them at all. They are not going to tell you at all. And so I know the value of, especially this, this program right here, I know the value of this program right here. If you were to go in and your insurance company was paying for what it is that I'm going to do for you, it would easily be a good $350. Easy. And I know that just because I do audits and stuff. So I know it, right? So anyway, I want you to be excited and come along on this journey with me for 30 days. We're going to reset our hearts, reset our mind. When I say heart, I'm talking about getting healthy. So we are going to reset whatever that is that you started off with, with 2019, especially y'all that's in ministry. Y'all know y'all can't minister to nobody from an empty cup. You... I, I was about to go on a tangent with that. I ain't even going to do it. <laughs> okay. Okay. I got a customer. All right. Bye. See y'all in the next video. <laughs>